Okay, so I yeah, cleared up some space on the phone here. Nothing I can't get back. Uh, so this is going to be the second part. You know, I had to clear up a lot of uh, music that I was using. and uh, But that's an okay sacrifice. I'll take that over um, the importance of what I'm trying what I'm trying to communicate. Um, so to pick up where I left off, you know, uh, basically the gist of this is that to be queer is fashionable. It's hipsterism. It's, uh, it's a trend, right? Hence why I say trans trenderism and why I don't approve of the, of the surgeries and so forth, because they're irreversible, right? You can't, it's, it's extreme body modification to fit a mental identity. That for which, uh, you know, everything starts with the thought, right? The thought process and uh, the idea and then the idealism and then then, then the ideology. Uh, because an ideology, an idol, well, if in religious terms, is some is something that's held before God. That is, and thou shalt not have any false idols uh, before me. And again, as I said before, you know, as, as the preamble to starting this, I do not judge, you know, uh, the, this rainbow identity that people blanket themselves with. And then some people will look at me and be like, oh, look at this guy. He's an NB or he's an incel, right? He doesn't always want want to, you know, uh, identify with his sexuality or something along those lines. And you couldn't be further from the truth. I'm 100% man. Thank you very much. And uh, it's only, only because of the culture and by, you know, exploitation and having been you know, touched by a gay man without permission, without consent, because he took advantage and then gaslit me that I had some sort of questioning of, of identity and then depression at the same time because of losing people that I love to these cultural movements, you know, at large, you know, uh, it's just very distressing. Yeah, again, because it, it's intoxicating. It's all intoxicating. It's all a drug. It's a, it, especially with the electronics and the technology and how, how, um, prevalent and easy it is to, to communicate these ideas, these uh, degenerate idealisms. You know, uh, we're supposed to regenerate through our children, not degenerate and participate in voluntary suicide as a culture. And that voluntary suicide, this cultural thing, this context having to do with inaccurate science, right, uh, about climate change and uh, blaming for historical actions for which we have no have had no part or well, by interpretation of others we've had the benefit or certain demographics have had the benefit of uh prospering from but it's lacking uh further larger cultural context and correlation to the history uh hence where the anthropology comes in and then also the just as it is with the code code and encoding of these programs in of ai um, that, uh, you know, the person's belief systems, uh, get, uh, sublimated into the product, you know, and as an artist, and I know this, I know this implicitly because I've been using, um, the years of my mistreatment and my exclusion and, uh, you know, uh, social bullying and, uh, also of, you know, my willingness to please and serve. Because uh, as a personal motivation, I've always been a compassionate person. There's a history, there's a family history of doing this, and, you know, because it's a tenet of Christianity and many other religions to do this and do good works, right? Uh, what's it? Uh, clothe, the, clothe the naked, and feed, uh, feed the hungry, heal the sick, and house the homeless. Do good works. And then teach the uneducated. So, okay, going further. So, all right. Unlike popular notions of narcissism defined as self-love, Freud's position is that narcissism is not about one's desire for one's own reflection, but for what the self would like to be, an idealized self. And other, in another maneuver, one does not simply have desire for an object, the idealized self, but also an identification with the object. A desire to be and to be desired by it. 
Um, thus, narcissistic desire is both desire for and desire to be one's ideal self. Lewis and Rowley, 1997, Probin, 1995. If one maps their framework onto the social, then queer subjects both desires, both desire the object and of the gaze, so the male gaze, others whom one identifies with an idealized version of oneself, you know, uh, and want to be the desired object, if not to be objectified by them. And so this is the thing: is that there's this 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 double speak that women have, especially by these communities. They're talking about you know, the male gaze and so forth. These, uh, you know, are going you know, correlated to uh, more extreme uh, interpretations of feminism, you know, uh, these third third wave grievances. Uh, three generations from wealth to ruin, you know, as I've said before in another video, okay, so suffragettes were necessary. Uh, the bra burners were an expansion upon that and in more, more giving more rights to women in, in reproduction and so on and so forth, abortion. Uh, and, and, uh, that's another topic I'll, I'll touch on another time, but I'm going to stick to this. And also the division of labor, which is, you know, the division of labor and the seizing the means of production, that's a communist idealism. So community communism, etc. Okay, so uh, da, 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 da. the scenario explains how shared culture, cultural codes of dress and adornment in particular circulate in queer subcultures. That is not to say, of course, that all lesbians desire all lesbians, probably in 1995, but that specific items of clothing and jewelry or haircuts or body modifications. So that's where the transgenderism starts, okay? In a, in a desire for a narcissistic idealism of the self so if someone identifies as butch or being masculine as a woman they have to assume the masculine uh you know body formation but this is this is entirely a trend okay uh the the involvement of creativity in the gay community so uh you know the arts and so forth and the performative uh you know so shakespeare shakespearean times and other 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 troops and tropes of uh you know a, a male, all male drama cast traveling together as a band of performers and then some of them uh assuming the roles as as women but in that time it was for comedy's sake it was not it was not you know we got, we got to be careful not to impose modern day values upon the past that's a very big no-no when talking about history uh okay that all okay but that specific items of clothing and jewelry or haircuts or body modifications come come to have currency in specific queer subcultures. So status, status, victimhood, and status. It explains very neatly Joe's motivation for the purpose of her Adidas top. Finally, an important point to note here is that dressing up to go out on the scene is out on the scene or like so, so going to, to find a dance partner, so to speak. In the clubs uh, and have a good time is not simply a process of identifying oneself as a passive sexual object which is true right women are not passive sexual objects they're just as sexual as men are they're just as sexual as i am geez I, a woman comes up to me and says uh hey you want to you want to come home with me i'll probably say yes if you're if you know if i find you interesting that's the whole point of the equality is is that you know the, the, the traditions and the institutions of the past don't necessarily have as much weight as weight anymore because they've been eroded by this subjective interpretation, right? That's where I'm at with my opinion on this and my observations as, as you know, an amateur historian and physician <laughs> and slightly narcissistic myself, having an idealized version of myself talking to this phone into you in a one-sided conversation. Because that's what this is all about. This is about having a one-sided conversation with the greater culture at large and trying to say, uh, screw you. Don't you you can't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I know what to do about myself and my body. And I'm not gonna deal with my problems. I'm not gonna talk about them. I'm gonna go to a therapist, I'm gonna get drugged up, and then I can I'm gonna complain and complain and complain about my circumstances without ever, ever actually changing anything about my life circumstances, not getting educated, not talking, not going to a support group. And, and committing acts of, of uh, cultural treason.
you know, because th this is how it works. You know, there's uh, there was this concept called the uh, the gay bomb uh, developed by the United States, and whether or not you know they were able to drop this this pheromone based weapon that would hijack the endocrine system and uh, make people attracted to more attracted to people of the same sex, so as to uh, root out any kind of desire to fight. Uh, you know, so that the, the the army could walk right in. And, uh, yeah, without any resistance. So here we are in the age of the gay bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you look at, you look at, uh, again, with the technology, you know, um, Twitter, Reddit, Tumblr, uh, and to some respect, uh, Instagram, or it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, specific, but I'm going to, I'm going to cite the, uh, old deviant art and so forth where, where these, uh, you know, after being, uh, where certain gen part of our generation, if, uh, you know, myself included in some respects, having been desensitized to sexuality and easy access to pornography, and also even easier access to, to, to snuff porn and uh, body modification, uh, pedophilia, uh, and other, other kinds of uh, taboo subjects. Because that's where it all goes. It all goes, it goes back to, as I said before if, in the other video, it's voluntary cultural suicide. It is. I'll say it. I'll put it right out there. And based upon... Uh, information of the day because the science changes and then when you uh, again uh, referencing to the previous video the part one um, that uh, that it's it's a trend it's it's all about power and manipulation of the populace as as is the, the propaganda in order to maintain the reins of control you know, and, and it, you can say it's the patriarchy or you could say it's the, it's the matriarchy or whatever, but the, you know, uh, that person on top is balancing on, on a ball, like an elephant. And if you just, you just poke it in the right place, house of cards goes all right down because that's what it's built upon It's built upon manipulation tactics. And I, I, I personally, I don't want this to be of my humanity. You know, I don't want this to be the prevalence. You know, I, I, I'm still friends and I still communicate uh, with people of different sexual identities and well, uh, preferences. I don't, I mean, not necessarily understand it. And I, frankly, I find it disgusting. But that's my stance. I'm not going to get in the way of them living their life. They made that choice to be to be a stonewaller, okay? Like, let God judge you. I'm not going to go out and have some sort of physical confrontation with these people just because I've been a I've been victimized. I've moved past moved past from this as best I can, and I, I've I've you know I filed my report. I've dealt with this. I've dealt with my problems, and I'm dealing with my problems in a conductive manner. Hence why I'm doing some of these videos in order to communicate that there's a way to deal with this in a, in a conductive manner and that we can get past these foreign actors which are tr totally trying to screw with us and undermine the society at large for resources. Because that's what it is. It's a, at the end of all things, it's all about resources and money. And I know there's a lot of people that will watch this video that are gay or queer or whatever, and, the, and they're of the same opinion. They don't want to be manipulated by this gay washing and this corporate this corporate uh, welfare state and these these exploiters that benefit off the victimhood and also of the marginalization, you know, because there's um, I don't need to cite uh, specific companies because they're well known. Um, you know, I'm not going to attack them. I have no need to attack them. They've made their choices as to uh, who they want to identify with and who their markets are. Uh, specific niche niche markets, you know, they all can cater cater to a certain demographic and so on and so forth. It, that's the means of business. But when you get it all together, that's racketeering, right? And racketeering is against the law for a reason because it, it encourages monopolies, and monopolies are bad for capitalism and for you know individual pursuit, uh, individual freedoms, 
right? If you're going to look at me, I'm going to say, yes, I'm probably a classical liberal, okay? Uh, and But I have... I have examined, you know, the full the full compass in order to come to my, my my particular position as a political and active person, you know, as my civic duty, uh, expressing my rights and freedoms as as uh, as I am in Canada right now, in twenty twenty two. That's it. Okay, so we're going to continue on with this because I had to go on that 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 tangent. Because this, that's what it really, really boils down to. Because they're talking about status symbols and fashion and access to, access to uh, certain facilities and having free time and so on and so forth in order to go out to these bars and to, to, to mingle and to uh, have dance partners. Finally, an important point to note here is that dressing up to go out on the scene is not simply a process of identifying oneself as a passive sexual object, but rather the double movement of having and being, creating an idealized self in the gaze of the other, so desire and being attractive. Right? This explains one of the most fundamental and pleasurable activities of the scene, to look and be looked at. Right? Peacocking. I enjoy peacocking. Right? Um, I oft, I've said this to other people, you know, uh, when I go out, which I haven't in a long time, because I don't have the money. I don't, I don't want to waste money uh, like that anymore. And I don't have the same friend group anymore to, to really go about that. So it, it takes, uh, and I'm getting, getting my confidence back and by doing these videos. And I may just end up, you know, showing up on my own with no friends and then walking up to the women that I desire. Because I can't and because I want to. And I want children. Okay, but not at the price of me or my identity or my socioeconomic status. I will not be put into bounds of slavery by means of the court system, um, that by which women have used and manipulated to benefit themselves. It's not fair. Men have reproductive rights as well. It takes two to tangle. This explains one of the most fundamental, okay, yeah, as Lewis and Rowley concluded in the fashion, in relation to fashion magazines, but I feel the argument holds in this context. The importance of dress as a signifier of sexuality and sexual identity and looking as a social identifying and sexualized activity, right? So the gaze, there's a female gaze, right? And one of the other books that I read in this course, it was called Female Chauvinist Pig. It's a very important text, and I encourage you to read it. It's not very long, but it has to do with uh, revenge tactics and, uh, you know, dominating men to improve their own social standings, which is exploitive and the means by which we all suffer. Identifying and sexualized, act okay, uh, coalesce to provide a supplementary pleasure in the activity of consuming queer culture. Looking like what you are in terms of self-presentation is crucial for a recognizable queer identity and structurally, structurally central to the th theorization of marginal identities. So it's cool to be queer. That's where we're at, right? Um, and where we've been going to in the past 15 years. Uh, you know, I'm not going to blame anyone, any central figure in, in the public sphere for setting an example, um, you know, because uh, who am I to say? You got to separate the art from the artist. Uh, you know, you got to understand that the person has been through uh, a, a large amount of suffering in a lot of instances to come to the conclusions and to, the, you know, to, to produce the art, the works of art that they've they've had art is suffering life is suffering if you go by the buddhist tenet and it's not permanent it doesn't last forever and even in my my own my own efforts to make make my my oil paintings as permanent as possible eventually they'll degrade and they'll fade away or they'll get destroyed by people who are jealous and that's an art crime i'm not going to repeat 
uh, mistakes of the past and destroy degenerate artwork. And we use it as an example as to what happens when decadence takes over and, w and when people get drunk on power and get drunk intoxicated by uh, these highly potent drugs, right? So if I'm going to include, include um, you know, the downers this time, so heroin, opium, uh, Oxycontin, cocaine, uh, speed, uh, methamphetamine, you know, speed's not necessarily a methamphetamine, MDMA, ecstasy, you know, I've seen, I've seen rocks like this of MDMA. I have legitimately and those who watch my video and they know who they are i'm not going to incriminate them um that they were crunching these things like <laughs> eating it like like rock candy and i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it at all but there's a reason for the, why this happens is because of suffering and undealt with trauma because they don't have the means to communicate. They don't have the education in how to express themselves. And hence why, what I've said in other videos, I wanted to be the first fighter, one of the first fighter pilots with an arts degree. Because you have to know why you're fighting. You have to have a good reason to be at the tip of the spear, to be a special force. You have to have a good reason to fight. And stand up for something it's because if you don't stand up for something you'll fall for anything and that's where this goes is that you know these people uh you know having been been manipulated and exploited from a young age i'll, I'll get that into where that correlates to modern day slavery and the communist manifesto um you know the means by which we are all enslaved it wasn't supposed to be like this you know there was it wasn't necessarily uh, the internet wasn't necessarily seen to be um, what it is now, right? And hence why these breakups are happening of these, these, uh, you know, uh, these empires, you feudal, feudal times. So we're going to talk, talk like, like BlackRock, you know, uh, by Mr. Gates, whom, uh, you know, is buying up farmland. I hope he's doing it to, to save and not to, not to hinder. Uh, but we know uh, you, we need to think about why we're doing something more than how can we do it. Or, you know, um, topically, um, I don't agree with you, Mr. Premier, and this 413 highway, okay? There's the leveling of farmland that is essential to the survival of Canadian people. And if you follow through with it, you will hang. You will hang, not by, by my words, but by somebody else's. And you'll hang in the, in the court of public opinion. And there's far worse punishments than death. This is not a threat. I will not threaten anyone uh, by making these statements. It could be, this, this is a misinterpretation. If you misinterpret my words as a threat, that's your fault. Okay, I'm an artist. I, I will provocate you into thinking about what you're doing. That's my responsibility as a special force, even though I'm a civilian and I don't represent the military. Okay. Looking like what you are. Of self-preservation is crucial for recognizable queer identity and structurally central to the theorization of marginal identities. The comfort of identity is thus far from an individual or individualizing state within queer culture. Rather, it is always social through its discourse. So the conversation, when someone says discourse, it means the conversation, may sometimes carry the rhetoric of individualism. Fashioning the queer self is a practice located at the intersection of these imperatives. So it's the difference between the community and the individual. So the space between uh, this gray area. And it's by these gray areas that the exploitation happens of people who are of good intent and of pure heart.
Okay. That's good enough. Uh, I may read from this more at another time. But again, this is, this is very good. And apologies, apologies to the University of Guelph. I forgot that I had this for a very long time. And if you want it back, just ask me. You know, it's easy to forget forget the the day to day things. You have so much information running around your head. Okay, so the freed slave, this guy. Okay. He freed himself. He didn't ask anybody to free him. You know? Snowball. <laughs> oh, he's a freeman. What? That man over there in that net? <laughs> yeah, 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 he is. Yeah, he is. Come with that dentist. <laughs> The Django, oh, classic film, honestly. Yeah. Okay, where am I going to go with this? I opened this up at random, and I read a lot of this, uh, you know, years ago uh, as part of my course material for African history, you know, in the slave trade. Because, uh, you know, and this, and this, so how, this, how the body dressing correlates to this and the slave trade is that, again, you know, there's people, there's organizations and people out there that benefit from victimhood ideology, um, you know, and they turn them into, into puppets. They're the flying monkeys of a political ideology. And, uh, you know, uh, I forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And it's not my place to judge them. And hopefully they'll free themselves from this, this bondage. Uh, by listening to the words and other the words that I have to say and that other people have to say. Uh, excuse me. Okay, let's see. Let's do a little intro here. Say so literacy and religion. That's a good one. So that's a that's a theme for these videos that I'm doing right now. Uh, you know, education is the antithesis and the solution, especially education of history, of uh, you know, combating the disruptors that for whom seek to dominate via the theft of intellectual property. And the gain of control by, you know, buying up these patents and, uh, you know, not releasing them, uh, you know, uh, hostile takeovers, uh, you know, unfair business practices, using uh, third party agencies for, you know, uh, human resources and thus participating in human trafficking. Because uh, that's how it was. Someone, you know, if you, you think about this, this is not common information, but someone had to own those ships, you know, going across the Atlantic. Someone had to own them. Someone had to profit from the transport. And if you look at well, how, how slavery happened in the United States, it was the Democrats, it wasn't the Republicans that, uh, you know, they wanted to continue it, the Southern liberals. And, you know, I, again, I may, I, that may be a bit of disinformation, but that's what I remember, you see. So please do your own research to confirm that. And it, it's, uh, it's very touchy information. Okay. Literacy and religion. So this is in the introduction. Since the slave trade was a great moral evil, so mor there's morality and there's ethics. So morality is subjective, and ethics is the objective. And, and, and so this, this, is, this is a book of queer morality, right? It's, 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 it's uh, going about uh, as if, you know, replacement of religion with another religion. You know, central tenets, you know, in the absence of a central belief system, another one is constructed. 
And uh, it, it makes me think about the South Park thing. Uh, you know, for science, <laughs> the atheism movement and all that stuff. Oh, boy. How many people did that take under? You know, at the bottom of scientific inquiry, you find God again. So, okay. Uh, though very profitable for those who were engaged or invested in it, Aquino firmly believed in Christian education for Africans as well as the need to convert those who were Christians in name only to, in name, Christians, let's say were Christians only in name, into true believers. Part of this process included his acquisition and use of literacy. So the freed slave decided that it was best for him to get the message across so that he could free other slaves. Put two and two, two, and two together here. Because even, you know, only, uh, I'm still a slave, much like everybody else here, unless they have, you know, a vast amount of resources at their disposal and, a, and, a, and an army of people at their disposal. But even then, um, they're a slave to an ideology, to an idealism, to this, uh, you know, this, this uh, arrogance and this uh, spitting in the face of the creator, okay? the almighty creator or creators, depending on, on uh, where you come from. Okay. Part of this process includes his acquisition and use of literacy. Aquino draws on the comic, the comic potential of the old topos of the book that is encountered by someone who does not know how to read. So if you don't know how to read, you need to listen to someone that does. And there's a lot of things to be extrapolated from uh, what's between the lines, right? There's missing information and so on and so forth. And only, only a historian, only a historian, someone who looks at the documents and, uh, you know, understands the, the cultural context at large and, and the narrative from one point to the next within a specific period really has the true word. And it's best to go by firsthand accounts, you know, uh, first-hand interviews, second, second-hand, third-hand uh, becomes a telephone. And that's usually the complaint people have about the Bible. They're like, oh, who wrote that book in, in the Bible and so forth? I had often seen my master and Dick employed in reading and that had a great curiosity to talk to the books as though they did. And so to learn how all things had a beginning. For the pr that purpose, I had often taken up in a book and have talked to it and then put my ears to it when alone in hopes it would answer me. But I have been very much concerned with when I found it remained silent. So just like this, uh, this video, right? Uh, reading a book is a one-sided conversation, uh, but it requires you to have a cognitive ability, right? That which is not clouded, right? And you have critical reasoning skills. And, you know, again, so... Um, this examine me all you want if you think that's a tell. Uh, so there's an absence of critical reasoning in 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 this uh, text, like what they're describing about these cultures, is because it's uh it's more feelings, it's subjective, is very much uh, oh ooh, how oh. oh, oh, oh kind of thing it's like a dance which is uh highly feminine and it's all and it's all about uh sex and sexuality and a dominance hierarchy who gets to mate with whom and if uh, these these people on the outside then you feel they're not, they can't mate with anybody then then they then you know create their own power structures and their own communications and their own cultures and so on and so forth I digress. This scene, uh, okay, the, the, the. pioneerly high, highlighted in this context by Paul Edwards and brilliantly examined by Henry Lois Gates Jr. as part of the encounter of orally communicating with lettered cultures, echoed many others in colonial and post-colonial texts, for example. Uh, what's it? Uh, El Inca. 
you know, that's the thing too, is that uh, much of, of history is oral tradition. And hence the telephone thing, right? A lot of it wasn't written down. And, and a lot of these these uh, these African and the Asian, well, not Asian, uh, South American cultures. Uh, and and, and, uh, and Middle Eastern, like up to a certain point until papyrus and so forth. Uh, that's where the tribal the term tribal, tribal knowledge comes from because it's it's all about a conversation. Okay, and the memoirs. Uh, so that's a Garcella de Vega Royal Vega's Royal Commentaries of the Incas in General History of Peru, and the memoirs of contemporary Afro British and African American authors like James Albert. Uh, Kawasa Gronisa, 1770, uh, John Marin, 1785, and Bona Ataba Gugano. So, like, you know, this is, uh, you, you know, the, the Africans, uh, if I, when I remember this stuff, uh, Ubuntu, right, and uh, the Bantu language, right, the Bantu expansion, and so on and so forth. Uh, gosa, gosa, <laughs> the clicking language, right? I remember in my lecture when um, the professor was up, up at the front and he had a nice beard, you know, a bit of a ponytail, if I remember correctly. A very knowledgeable dude. Uh, okay. The initiation into the magic of the lettered word interested Koino most especially in connection with his meditations on the Bible. In fact, he tells us when the book finally speaks to him and that one remaining silent at first was God. Aquino's conversation occurred at that very moment. He is reading Acts 4.12 in the page which the Bible in his hands as the front, uh, frontispiece is opened. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So in other words, it's up to ourselves to have a personal relationship with God and, and to, to go on one knee and ask for forgiveness. You know, it's not up to other people. It's a personal responsibility uh, to actualize oneself. And if you go to Jungian, right? Okay, thanks to, thanks to Peterson, you know, uh, credit where it's due, you know, missing some pieces in, in, in some of, of what was going on, uh, trying to figure this all out. Because the psychology really matters too with the culture and uh, historical context. Uh, he is reading, okay, when he finds that the scriptures became an unsealed book. The word of God was sweet to my taste, yea, sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. This experience makes the Bible his only companion and comfort. So, you know, thine is the way, the truth and the light, right? This beat up Bible. And amongst Christians, and you think about it, the beat up Bible is a status symbol. It's a, it's a, it's a signifier of piety, 